two things I just want to tell you. Number one, I don't know any of the people who shouted out ideas. Those were not plants. The other thing that happened is you guys came up with some fabulous concepts that I really want to talk about. But Terry said red jumpsuits and my brain got stuck there. I'm like, okay, I am eating up a lot of my 20 minutes thinking about red jumpsuits. This is not working for me. Literally though, where I went when I started thinking about red jumpsuits was a place that I've mostly moved past, but that still comes back. And it's that place of self-doubt. It's that place of negative self-talk. It's that place where I think, oh, could I wear a red jumpsuit? Would I look foolish? Everybody else can wear a red jumpsuit. Maybe I missed the memo. And how did I stop that? I stopped that with self-compassion. See, that's our secret weapon in the world. And I want you to understand the difference between compassion and empathy. Empathy is about feeling the feelings of another person, and that's an important skill. But compassion, that is about feeling for someone and without judgment. Now that's vital. It's pulling the judgment out that really makes a difference. And compassion, we can't get there without self-compassion. So putting aside the red jumpsuits, what is self-compassion? There's three elements in self-compassion. Kindness, treating yourself the way that you would, somebody that you love. Common humanity, understanding that each one of you and I, we're all the same. We have the same nervous system and the same range of emotions and the same feelings. And our struggles, while the circumstances might be different, internally, we feel the same. And the third element to self-compassion is something that Kristen Neff, who's the researcher, she calls mindfulness. But Brené Brown, if you've ever heard of her, she and Kristen Neff were doing a workshop together. And Brené said, hey, Kristen, I don't really like that word mindfulness because it sounds a little too woo-woo for me. So instead, in true Brené Brown fashion, what she came up with was this idea, courageous presence. Courageous presence. And I share that with you because that's exactly the way that I think we can think about mindfulness in a self-compassionate way. So when I have the courage to be present with myself and to pull judgment out and to say, I'm a human, just like everybody else in here, then I can stop thinking about whether or not I should have worn something different or why I'm not four inches taller or some other thing about me. And instead, come back to what is it that I want you to know? I want you to know about self-compassion and how it literally can change your world. Now, someone else mentioned divisiveness and someone else wanted to know, and normally I don't pull all these together, but someone else wanted to know why might we love our pets more than our spouses? <laughs> and I wanna tell you my spouse is here and I do not love my pets more than my spouse. I love my spouse the most. But there is research about this. I didn't know, that's what I did in my 20 minutes. After I stopped thinking about red jumpsuits, I'm like, I need to look this up because you're gonna wanna know. So in about 2003, there was a study that said about 15% of pet owners prefer their pets to their spouses. So there's some <laughs> truth to that. And a 2019 study showed that 65% of dog owners actually take more pictures of their dog than they do their spouse which sort of cracked me up. I thought that was pretty funny. Okay, but why are pets important? And how am I connecting this to self-compassion and divisiveness? One of the things that we get from pets is that sense of connection and unconditional love. Now, in truth, if you're petting a pet, your brain and the pet's brain both release oxytocin. And oxytocin is something that helps us feel good. 
it's a hormone in our body, and that's how we connect with other people. So in fact, a strategy for reducing divisiveness might be to have a lot more pets in the world. <laughs> I don't know about that. I can't tell you that there's research yet. But what we do know is that when we can focus on connecting with other people, when we can focus on seeing each other in a manner of compassion and using self-compassion, then suddenly things begin to change. And literally, that's the moment when we go from conversing to communicating. Because conversing is simply sharing words between each other. I looked that one up too. It's literally just when we're sharing words between each other. But communicating, that's when we're taking in what the other person is saying. And we're not so busy thinking about what we have to say. We're taking that in and pausing and connecting and then sharing back with the other person. So if we can do this, in a way that includes self-compassion, imagine what that does to our communication. Imagine what that does to our relationships. And imagine the ways in which suddenly we can begin connecting and changing the world. Now, you might be thinking, hmm, I don't know that I can do this, so I'm going to give you the one secret tool that you can use that will tell you, yes, I can do this. Are you ready? Okay. This is a thing that you already know, and I'm going to say it, and you are not going to be like, no, that doesn't work, okay? <laughs> the one secret is breathing. Now, you all would be like, yeah, yeah, whatever. No, it does. <laughs> This works for your nervous system. So one time with me, this is a way to access your self-compassion. Big deep breath in from the belly and let it out. I promise all the science will let you know that makes a difference. That gives you courageous presence. And from there, you can practice self-compassion and make the world better. Thank you.